news with Gina Gina. The news with Gina Grad. Yeah, we're looking at the old school flames, and then we're looking at the ghost flames, and the ghost flames are just sort of understated. They don't really get in your face, but you still you get the cool factor without the pop part. I yeah, think, it's definitely cooler. The other one's a little like, we get it. I think the ghost flames car analogy for the brothers in the NBA are sleeved up is about, about right. Yeah. All right, here we go. Well, Lori Laughlin and husband Massimo Giannulli think a trial in the college admissions scandal could bring them redemption. The couple formally pled not guilty to charges of mail fraud and money laundering in the case. Uh, that was Monday. They oh, faced- had a, a great confusing uh, conversation <laughs> <clears throat> with uh, Mike August oh, at good. lunch today. Oh, you, can just say, you, you can just say a conversation. You're right. Mm. So I uh, was sitting there with uh, Kevin Hench, who knows all things Boston sports, and uh, sort of I'd always hypothesized that Robert Kraft went into the rub and tug mm-hmm. because it's at a strip mall and he can keep a low profile. None of the chicks who work there know who Robert right. Kraft is and blah, blah, blah. And I was saying to Mike, Mike would always go, why does he just get a high class girl and call her up to the penthouse? I was like, because she knows she's. She's doing she knows, the math. Yeah. She sees she knows your she's doing business your with. monogram shirts. You see her up at the up at the penthouse. Mm-hmm. She's getting out her phone. She's checking some yep. stuff. He just wants to fly under the radar. And then Mike would hear that and he'd go, "I don't get it. Just hire a pro to come up to your place." And I'd go, "I don't." So Hanch explained that he was extorted um, by a pro. That, really? that the story is the the word on the street is that this was kind of his thing. And then somebody wised up and started asking for more. Mm-hmm. And he sort of makes sense that you have, end up at the corner place in the strip mall with none of the folks who, mm-hmm. you know, oh, you mean a high end girl. Space, extorted him? Of, he had to go yeah. elsewhere. Yeah. Right. My my <clears throat> my argument was sort of like, I you know, when when you go. It's like it's like rich guys like Zuckerberg's probably wearing flip flops and cargo shorts right now, and he doesn't want to go out and spats in a three piece suit and with a pocket watch. And he doesn't yeah. want to get rolled. You right. know what I mean? Like there's a kind of a fly under the radar move you can do where they're not looking for rich yeah. guys. And so I kept saying that I'm telling Mike that's why Crafty went in to get the handy at the little strip mall place because he just wants what he wants, but he doesn't want people right. to take notice of him and then mike would pause and go why didn't he get a professional like, like a, a high-end one to like come up at his place and i'd keep going how do you think he has to be a billionaire he doesn't plus professionals he, want, he doesn't want him to know mm-hmm. like he doesn't and also that thought was also mixed with <clears throat> the aforementioned uh on some other show but when we're hanging out doing uh crank yankers with um Oh, God, I just forgot his name. Eminem. Jimmy Kimmel? Eminem. Sorry, Eminem, and he made 50 million bucks that year, and he wanted Taco Bell. Like, you want what guys you want. like Taco Bell. Yeah. Like, rich guys like Taco Bell. How, how many rich guys eat at an In-N-Out burger and love it? You sure know what lot. I mean? Yeah. There's nothing oh. to do with it and what you can afford. It's like you, what, you, what you like. Your family, regularly. Right. So Crafty yeah. probably went because that's what he liked, mm-hmm. but also... I think he just wants to get in and out of there, pardon the pun, yeah. and, and not have to deal with it. Mike couldn't – he, he'd go, but what about the risk? What about the risk? It's, and I would say the riskier call oh, yeah. is having the white chick yeah, who's 24 and all over Instagram mm-hmm. show up mm-hmm. at your – it's your beachfront condo. Yeah. There's a much more of a cultural language, whatever barrier. If you're going into the orchids of Asia, no one's going to, you know, pun, no pun intended, no one's going to finger you. You know right. what I mean? No one's going to be like, oh, it, oh that's, the, that's the honor of the New England Patriots. Well, the, right. the other move is, and I have a friend who's rich and hangs out with rich people, and um, they, uh, he doesn't do this, but his friends share. There's a woman that'll be safe, you know, that will, she lives in New York, and these guys know when they go there, she's not going to tell you're not going through an agency it's sort of like you pass her number around but then do you want to be with the girl that was with your three guys so they're all also? Eskimo brothers now yeah is that what it's called yeah yeah that's mm. cool yeah you don't want to i don't know do you want to share that 
Yeah. I'm sure those are the only three guys. <laughs> yeah, right. And if that happens to the Jonas Brothers, do they change their name to Eskimos <laughs> or do they just go, We're st- we could, this will still work as long right. as we don't get to a fourth chick? Yeah. I just All had right. my friend send me an email to porn, which even that was weird. Like, let's share. Like, I want you to jerk off. To the thing I jerked off to. Then we can see each other and be like, hey, did you come to it? Yeah, I came too. <laughs> yeah. That's just weird. And it was like, and not only that, but I, uh, so, so I open it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so I open it. And uh, it launches a virus, which, you know, when page after page opens, yeah. they just keep popping new pages. And it start, and it, and it's just, and the pages are just <gasps> animated dicks coming on a Japanese face and like, yeah. you know, uh, just the ho- most horrible anime and so i and it goes ah! and so i slam it shut and, oh, and, and i leave and i leave it that way for like three or four minutes like you know like the virus will go away they they he, he must have left yeah let's go back to, to china here. and by the way fitz dog's sitting in the middle aisle of the southwest flight <laughs> at this point so i mean he's not even at the window like this is a three alarm fire His seat no, partners are you yeah, know me i go on, on the bathroom swivel. for that yeah, I know. you have a little something called dignity yeah yeah, it, it's guys are weird. I remember having this conversation with my assistant many years ago where he's like, you watch you porn? And I was like, uh, sometimes. He's like, you should be watching you jizz. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. He's like, uh, yeah, you jizz is much stronger website. I'm like, okay. Did you get my stuff from the dry cleaners yet? Or? Please don't say this was Jay. <laughs> Well, I, won't, I won't say, but it was like a really earnest conversation. Oh, like, hey, man, no. we don't always have these talks, but uh, this is pretty important. That's a true assistant. Pull the car over. a life assistant. I got a sack of mulch in the back of the Explorer. Is that out yet? No, but let's really pull up a chair. I'm going to swing around backward, and I'm going to have the cool teacher talk with you hey, about you. You know, else, you know who else has a sack? <laughs> it's like... Okay, well, I'll just I'll, I'll, note it, note it, yeah. note it. You know, now, they, anyway, the mulch. You know, you know, the Asian feet on that particular one is really strong. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All right, Gina, where were you? Yeah, oh, so oh, Lori Lovelace. Sh- the, the whole thing comes down to she doesn't want to go to jail. Can we, I, I'm interested in the Fitz dog thing, and I'm also interested in, like, everyone's makeup psychologically. The way I'm wired, these stories mean nothing. These mm. are zero. These are mm. nothing. There's people getting shot in synagogues. Like, right. I don't care. People are in North Korea living off a of bark. You know right. what I mean? Like, I hear these stories. I, you can't get me outraged. Yeah. I don't care. McDonald's I, workers are being harassed by yeah, local, like, <laughs> rich thugs. Kids. local thugs. Yeah, my just, I don't care. And then some people are like, they're outraged. Like, this is unfair. This is rich people. Yeah. Like, whatever. And I'm like, I'm. I don't care. It's salacious. I just don't it's gossip. care. But all right. But she's, she says sent, her only chance to avoiding jail is to be found not guilty. She's rolling the dice. Right. I sent uh, – my son's a senior, so I sent a $75 gift card to Hooters to Trump University. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's in. Oh, mm. nice. That's all it took. Oh, got wow. into – uh, Got to see you. The LTU. <laughs> go, uh, go Orange Man. <laughs> orange Man. <laughs> the fighting Orange Man. <laughs> The eating orange man. The tweeting orange man. <laughs> tweeting, eating orange man. Everybody just switches their thumbs. Thumbs go up and down. Yeah. Well, Scandinavian Airlines says it will cancel another 504 flight departures across uh, the Nordic region, um, affecting about 47,000 passengers due to pilot strike. The cancellation comes on top of 546 flights that were already canceled on Tuesday and hundreds more since pilots began an open-ended strike last Friday uh, due to the collapse of their pay negotiations. The airline CEO admits negotiation talks are in a deadlock and nobody's going anywhere for a while. Hmm. I don't want scabs involved with that strike yeah. like yeah. when you're down at the garment district and who's going to sew these turtleneck sweaters like anybody yeah but you don't somebody. want the guy crossing that yeah. line no. like off oh, where we go i fly a crop duster what right. is this thing's basically just a huge crop duster <laughs> yeah with jets instead yeah. of a uh, one propeller <laughs> and you know aluminum on the wings instead of cloth yeah. You know what I mean? Well, Let's do it. Yeah. Where do we I've go? I've been riding my bike every day. <laughs> I know how to do the plane. <laughs> yeah, that's not one scab, mm. like, crossing the line. Yeah. Yeah, that's taking it to another level. Trying to think of when... I'm trying to think of the last... Like, like when a hotel gets... You know, once in a while, you'll pull up, and there'll be a hotel, mm. and there'll be, like, some sort of Shame group on, out there. Yeah, and you know, yeah. I'm always Shame like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to sleep on the sidewalk. Like, you're, yeah. By the way, whoever's in the hotel... 
the guy behind the counter is just mm. another guy. Like he may be a scab, but he's just he's always surprised. Like whenever you pull in, like <laughs> yeah. uh, Mike August, who? Mike August, oh. Mm. Did you have a room here? What's the meaning of this? Yes, because I'm not clinically insane. Well, let me see. Uh, what was your name again? Like, I, it shouldn't all be such a huge surprise yeah. to everybody yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. I worked through a grocery store strike in high school. Oh, you did? I was, uh, I was union. I was forced to, of course, you're forced to be in the union. It was a bagger, uh, part-time job in high school. And the grocery stores all went on strike, all the unions. But because we were very small, it was Lenardi's market up in the Bay Area. It's kind of like a Bristol Farms, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like, so we, had like, we had like six registers. It was like a specialty store. But we were like protected by the union. Like, you guys can stay open because you're a smaller store. You'd go under if you didn't. And so all of all the people who didn't want to cross the picket lines to shop, which was most people, came to our our store, so it was nuts, and all the workers from like Safeway and all the other you know Kroger's or whatever all came to work at our store. So for, it was like a crazy amount of people, all new people to me. Hi, nice to meet you. I'll be working with you today. It was a crazy time. Well, this is kind of a strike going on now with the writers. I don't know if you heard about this, but every I writer, have. every writer in the Writers Guild in Hollywood, all the writers had to fire their agents. Right, a couple yes. weeks ago, people were putting this on Instagram and on Twitter. Yeah, and well, that's the thing about writers. Once they're on strike, <laughs> they start writing a lot. <laughs> Like, I try to go to some websites and find out what's going on, and it's like these fucking tomes, like these eight-page epistolaries. And so and so, uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but the agents are we're, – we're having to go out and find the jobs. Let me give you a little insight to Hollywood. 99% of the jobs I get are people calling me going, hey, do you want to do this job? Right. Nobody in Hollywood gets jobs from their agent. A agents are but, don't but do we commission them. Sh- yes. Commission them. Sure. Most so of Hollywood. So now they're striking against us. Most of Hollywood really does nothing. They give annoying notes. Like it's just insane when you do a sitcom. How many assholes you have to deal with? Like it's insane. Everyone gets paid, and it's dumb. And at a certain point, whether it's you know whatever ter- podcasting is, terrestrial radio, whatever whatever that is, or the Tesla of automotive. Like at some point, you go look. Who do we need in this room who contributes? And also, it was kind of funny. And uh, Kevin Hench was explaining this to me uh, today at lunch, which is it, it's kind of interesting, which is like Marty Goldberg, picking a Jewish name intentionally. <laughs> I wasn't sure he was Jewish. Marty Goldberg can get paid because he's got 12 sitcoms going at once. So he'll just get paid from all of them. Adam Carolla can only get paid once because he's funny. Like, he's got to go up on stage and tell jokes, and he gets paid, but he can't do 12 comedy clubs simultaneously at night. But Marty's not funny, so he can get rich doing 12 shows. Fitzdog's funny, so he's got to get on a Southwest flight to Poughkeepsie and stand up on stage. So it's like, in a weird way, like, oh, so you're not funny, and you don't bring anything to the fucking table, so that's why you get paid times 12 sitcoms? But the guys who do all the work and are funny... Kevin Hench, who runs everything, writes everything, and does everything, can't do – he can do two sitcoms. He can't do a third because he has to work. No, Marty can get paid because he doesn't do mm-hmm. anything. Well, that's what this strike is coming down to is that the the agents are owning parts of shows. Many times the, the writers aren't owning it. Mm-hmm. Right. So at the end of the day when there's this big balloon of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, they're getting 10 percent of it. And the, the clients aren't. And so writers are going, wait, this doesn't make sense. That seems like a conflict. It'll it'll get it they'll a, go. A conflict a, of ev- interest eventually, for the agent to dip in on that. Eventually, the people who don't do anything will get pushed out. Like all all economies are that way. Mm. Just eventually, you'll get pushed out, and agents are going to be like cab drivers, mm. where you just be like fuck it, I got an Uber. Yeah. I'll just get this kid to pick me up in his Accord, and I'll get what I want. And you won't miss them for a second. You won't need them. You won't miss them. They don't do anything, and they have ten times as much money as everyone else. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right. Now that I've killed my career, let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> well, speaking of comedy uh, and stand up, TMZ. Oh, let me just say that, this. Yeah. I had a sad, I had, I had two sad realizations. One is about my childhood and what passed for entertainment. Uh, thinking about those old supermarkets and kind of what they smelled like and hanging mm-hmm. out and went being in line and stuff. Um, there was nothing on TV. There's no board games at home. There's no video games. There's no uh, you porn or you jizz or you anything. But 
when you would go to the supermarket, you could see that rubber conveyor belt move mm-hmm. and the person like kind of the control mm-hmm. it. And it was like, it's like, stop. And then you'd see the weird yep. divider someone would put yep. in between their stuff and the other stuff. And then they'd you'd watch the person, they'd hit it again. And mm-hmm. every once in a while, they'd back it up. Yeah. It's like, this is some top notch entertainment going <laughs> yeah. on here. I get yeah. to watch this belt and there's right. some there's some ramen on it and it's moving. Yeah. On its own. Look at that. There's is a thing of bananas. Yeah. There's a thing of high C, and it's just going. Yeah. yeah. Space sticks. Look at it go. And then the other super sad. Well, let me just say one, one yes. thing about that is sometimes they fuck with you, and you're mm. waiting, and they don't hit the button. Mm. And there's a big black yep. open area yep. between your product yep. and the yep. register, and you go aggressive. just fucking oh. push the yeah. button. Yes. I have a sad power move. Uh, admittedly, very sad. When I, it's my turn to like, I bag my own groceries, first of all. I don't trust anyone else to do it. Uh, I, once I get to the end, I uh, hit the switch. Make the thing go myself. <gasps> I know I know where the switch is. I worked at a grocery store for two and a half years. How have you not been escorted out of Ralph? Yeah. The, the switch is Don't either... You, yeah, but you got to be bonded and licensed, and then you have to... You have to re- again, you're this, a scab this is again. a sad power move, but I, I always hit the switch. Where always is it? The, you can it's, find it on your side absolutely. of it? Absolutely. It's either... It's either so you know things are generally very narrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's either at the very end, right by your knees, or it's right around by where... Like just around the corner by where the uh, uh, person's standing, again, by the knees. But that point you're going into their space right you reach around oh my god wow. their knees it's i gotta like a, tell it's you it's not in front of their knees it's made for a bagger so it's not where they're standing it's it, where the bagger would i be feel standing. like you Good are question. going to earn yourself an uh, excuse you because <laughs> this is a you reaching around yeah. to the inside uh, wow, i've never seen that move. again sad power move Mm. I know where the switch sad is. Power. I know where the switch the is. The other <laughs> super sad realization I've had, which is I was going to Kimmel's Theater a couple of weeks ago, and I started seeing those bird scooters like just mm. strewn strewn about. And it's fine. Like sometimes when you're down in Hollywood and they're just like leaning against a lamppost mm. or something. But when I was coming over the pass, the Sepulveda Pass, uh, sorry, when I was coming over the Coenga Pass and I was going down the road that went went off the 101 heading into Barham, whatever, I saw a lot of these scooters just leaned up against the bushes mm-hmm. and, like, just by the side of the road, just, you know, just, like, ghost-ridden into the bushes. And I was looking at him, and I looked at him, and I went, that would have been the most valuable item in my oh, childhood. Wow. That yeah. would have been the gl- yeah. gleaming spire of hope would have been one of those scooters. Yeah. Like That would have been the greatest. I would have been the king of the neighborhood. Another discarded. That would, the, <laughs> it would have been the best part of my childhood. That would have kept me busy from 9 to 19. Yeah. And other people just get <laughs> off on them and drop them or yeah. chuck them into a dumpster or toss right. them over the fence. Like. Yep. That's just that would have been the best part of my life if I if I had one of those in junior high that would have been the I would yep. have had a happy childhood. Yeah, I don't get the business model on those things because it no costs idea. like a dollar to ride it for an hour. Yeah, and they got to be you know the thing's got to be worth a couple grand. It's sitting out in the rain. People hate them. So in Venice, they're tipping them over. <laughs> no, they throw them in the no, ocean and my, stuff. That's right? That's what I was going to say. Really? My daughter's friends throw them in the ocean. Well, not her friends, yeah. but she knows like a bunch of punk skateboard <laughs> kids in the beach, and they they carry them down the uh, down the pier and they throw them off the sides of the pier. Wow. <laughs> what's the What's the beef? What's the why, I why like do, it. Why, I, do, people, there, well, why do people not like? Them? They're in the way when know. you're driving and okay. when you're walking. Well, so are human beings. But, but, no, but, they just. It's like is this antisocial dickhead? No, it, it's like there's a like, oh, you, you pay a premium to live in Venice. You open your front door and they're scattered all about mm. your sidewalk or drunken chicks mm. coming home at night or whatever it is. It's not a big beef, but I, I get it. Like, I wouldn't want to walk out of my front door and see a bunch right. of this laying around. But I, 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 it's transportation. I was thinking about, like, your defiant uh, daughter's friends ghost riding those things off the pier is kind of the super white version of the take back the night, you know, the black family with a candle <laughs> through the paper plate, marching through Watts after the 14-year-old was gunned down in the back by the LAPD. Like, that's their white version. Going, this was slightly in my way. This is the whitest version of a protest ever. Those bird scooters. I was inconvenienced. I was inconvenienced. Who else was inconvenienced? <laughs> we were inconvenienced. We're here. We're inconvenienced. Shit, nothing runs right. with inconvenience. <laughs> what are we not going to do? Walk around. <laughs> when are we going to do it? Now. <laughs> Inconvenient. It is the widest protest yeah, ever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you have a big picture on an uh, airbrush on a t-shirt of a friend of yours who rented one and it ran out of batteries. 
You know what I mean? Like, hey, man, <laughs> this is for Dakota. <laughs> you have a sticker on the back of your SUV of a, of a, of a scooter, 2019 and 2019. <laughs> yeah. We do the memorial. We do the roadside right. memorial for when it ran out of batteries. <laughs> it's the whitest protest ever. Let's do one more, Gina Graham. All right. Well, TMZ reports that Pete Davidson is going to war with a comedy club owner because the guy referred to Kate Beckinsale and Ariana Grande while introducing Pete. <laughs> so the SNL star wow. was supposed to perform Monday it's, night. It says on the writer, least funniest cast member of <laughs> you, SNL. You lead with All right, shit. bucko. <laughs> least funniest. How hard is that to remember? Least funniest cast member in the last 40 years on SNL. Okay? Not since Anthony Michael Hall. You know what? Just read the writer. Read the writer. Yeah. And remember, I need a 750 milliliter of unfunny juice in the back with the green m and You just call it juice. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was at Vinnie Brand Stress Factory in uh, Bridgeport. I worked do you it know for it? 20 years. Oh, do you know Vinnie? A great guy. Okay, yeah. so uh, he never made it on stage that night. Pete posted a video from his car immediately after bailing on the gig, and then there's video of Vinny playing this video and people just yelling F you at the screen the whole time. But this is what <laughs> Pete said when he left. Hey, guys in Connecticut. I'm sorry that we had to leave the show before had I got to, to go had on. To. Uh, had to. The owner, Vinny Brand, uh, disrespected me and uh, did something that I told him not to do. And uh, I can't, you know, perform under those circumstances. However, everybody who got uh, tickets to that show, I am doing a free show for you guys. We'll figure out where it's going to be in the next week. And, uh, you know, we'll all get we'll get it all sorted out. Sorry again. Uh, this is not your fault. Later. So according to club goers, Vinny did mention Kate and Ariana, but only because he was asking the crowd not to heckle Pete about his girlfriends. Sources say that uh, Pete said that it seemed very sarcastic, By the sarcastic over. Bring on the heckling when it has to do with world class yeah. Punani. <laughs> hey, you ever get tired of fucking tens? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, <laughs> Next. <laughs> I bet you love super rich, super hot pussy, don't you? you how, how many times does a four go into a ten? <laughs> Tell it come. Um, you yeah. know what? You got people that paid babysitters, paid yeah. for parking, bought tickets in advance. You do not have the right to cancel a fucking show. I'm glad he's a douche. And listen, I get it. You you hate yourself and mm-hmm. you're depressed and all all of the above. Like, I get it. Mm-hmm. It still doesn't – you can't be deputy douche. You can't be deputized to be a douche. The thing with the club owner, first off, that's a that's a three – what the club owner did. Secondly, you may cross that bridge with the club owner when it comes time to settle up at right. the end of the night. As After. far as the other 300 people who came there to see you, you owe them that performance. Yeah, and now right. those people that you want to do this free show for at a later date hate you. Uh, yeah. Or if you're funny, how about you make that the first 10 minutes say, of your act? If you want right. to make it about you and you insist on making it about you, then make it up the first, yeah, whatever, 10 minutes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, we've all – can I tell you, and and Fitzdog has probably done this as well, we've all had gigs at some college or some event or some something, and the guy's backstage, and here's, here's your IMDb page, and there's 13 pages of junk. You know, he wrote for the Wayne's Brothers, you know, in 19 – And I wrote for the Wayne's Brothers. That's what I'm saying. In 1997, <laughs> you know, and you, and you just go – he's got all the papers, and you go – just say you know him from the syndicated radio show and whatever. Mention Fitz Dog Radio and just bring me out. Yeah. Just just bring me out, man. And then smash cut to the guy standing up there just reading, doing exactly what you told him not to do. He's doing it. And then you have to go out and perform. That's how it works. Yeah. You don't want to storm out and make an Instagram video? <laughs> well, also go like, I, I I had to leave or I couldn't perform. Like, yes, yes, you could. The choice. You certainly could. No. Yeah. And also, I don't know, for being the least funny cast member on <laughs> SNL, where's the attitude coming from? Like, yeah. what is it that he's doing that's earned him this righteous indignation? Ariana and Kate. Yeah. Okay. That's what he's doing. Good. And again, that's uh, up there with the, the brothers going, uh, hey, man, with the stereotype of a wide cock and a great vertical leap, knock it off. Like, okay. <laughs> If that's the if those are the two you're going to yeah, choose, right. run with it. Yeah. If you're going to run with me banging 
And by the way, if I can fuck Ariana Grande and Kate Beckinsale, I can fuck anybody. Because mm. you all land somewhere mm. between those two. Mm-hmm. Mm. Hear me, fellas? Well said. All right. So anyway, Pete could not do it. Yeah. Why am I he angry? Had to, he had to leave. He had Sorry, to leave. Sorry, he had That's to leave. No mm. choice. Had to. We. Had to. Ugh. Look at dysentery. Sorry, I had to leave. I've not. I've never even seen his stand up, so I don't know if he's funny or not. Max Patty got a look. Ever, anyone see his stand up? No, I saw him. He was on a roast or two. I yeah, yeah, he's good. Oh, yeah. He's fine. funny. He does stuff at Largo uh, with Judd Apatow every once in a while. Yeah. I don't think sketch comedy is his. Is his uh, what he would? Yeah. Is, is, is the strength well, of his game. But how do we know he's never been filmed doing <laughs> sketch comedy? <laughs> just been a member for four years. Right. He's never physically been taped. There's some underground tape that's, of that's him doing sketch comedy. Unearthed. I have, I have his mixtape. He had one mixtape. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. You should be watching you jizz. Gina, Gina, Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad.